What's going on YouTube? This is Alex from MotorLife.com and today we have the Bullet Train engine and we're going to rip it apart and see what's inside. All right, so what's going on? I'm gonna get right into it. So if you didn't see the last video or you don't know what the bullet train is, um, go ahead and check that out. The link is in the description down there. <clears throat> so I'm gonna break this into three major parts. I'm gonna start with this head jug cylinder combo. I'm gonna rip that off. Then I'm gonna go towards the uh, centrifugal clutch, the centrifugal clutch, and then the pull start, all that. So I do see that it's kind of the regular style. You can see they kind of started with an original old China doll base inside and then added all this extra on here. Now, I've been getting a lot of comments saying, you know, this thing's a slug, which I mean, I've, I've ridden them, I drove them. They're not the fastest thing, I guarantee you, you won't see 50 miles an hour ever with these things, but it's still a little beefy engine, it's convenient. The push button start's actually really awesome. And I have seen a, a slim version, which is literally just everything without this Kickstarter part, or the pull start. So you can see, I don't know how much uh, slimmer that is, but thing's a hefty little engine, so let's go ahead and get in here. All right, and I do have to mention that I know this does say 80 cc's on everything. It's actually 70 cc's from what I've discovered, pretty sure. Um, and I know there's, you know, discrepancies with the measurements on the case and the jug and all that. But we're going to get in and see what this piston looks like. I'm kind of excited to see what the piston looks like, what the uh, actual, you know, crank, the rod, everything looks like. And then kind of see while I'm in here what kind of... Uh, upgrades I can do to get this thing going a little bit faster, which I'll have to reset the clutch, guarantee it, but let's go ahead and see what's going on. All right, so let's go ahead and start with this jug. You can see it's a unique, it's all one piece. It's all stamped on one piece of metal, so that doesn't mean you can increase the compression very easily by adding another head. It is all one huge chunk. It's kind of unique, but I do see this kind of looks like a 32 millimeter actual intake there so maybe reed valves i've seen them done with reed valves but the exhaust hole you can see that is a kind of a special made for this bt it has a copper compression ring that fits down that actually seals directly on there with the exhaust but see down that it actually has big gigantic holes down to the allen bolts in the bottom so you will need a longer allen key and it's the same size for these standard but you'll need that to get in there and i'm wondering kind of what the actual inside of this looks like so let's get in here and find out but i actually have seen one of these come on a regular china doll and i didn't uh didn't know where that came from so i'm kind of excited to see what's going on here Right, I can already say it's pretty interesting. Looks to be a bit larger. All right. So let's go ahead and see this. So right off I see that the piston has number three on it. Doesn't mean a whole lot. All right. Now I don't see a, there's actually a little tiny emblem on there. I think that's a can't really see on there. What is that? A number eight with a circle around it? Yeah, it looks no. It's a letter H with a circle around it. Gotcha. It looks like standard, uh, regular style clips in there. I might upgrade those. This looks to be a regular sized uh, piston, a low hole. Um, let me, might have another piston I can compare it to, but that crank I can already see is completely different. It's probably balanced totally different than a regular china doll but being the first time that i've opened one of those yeah you can see that's got a big difference on there and these transfer ports look pretty open that's not too bad we'll probably have to see about a new gasket i probably have to like open it up but it might have already been like that so good double check that all right let's see inside this let's go ahead and take this off all right, now you can see in there, if I can get a better shot in there. And that's all pretty unique and deep all the way down there. These are open. That was uh, kind of what I was wondering. And it looks like they're kind of just uh, sanded off. Doesn't look that smooth. 
Now there is some room for improvement in the actual intake and exhaust side. I see there's a couple little burrs, but the fact that these are open is pretty interesting. Um, hmm. So let's go ahead and get into this big it's a triple clutch. Now, this is like your regular dirt bike style clutch. So uh, use a centrifugal force to actually spread the actual pads around, which connects to a center ring or an outside ring, I'm pretty sure. And then that starts moving, you know, where your other, you know, your standard clutch pad would be. All right, let me just take just the regular standard type. But... See, this thing is still just a standard China doll center with all this extra stuff on the sides. Honestly, I've heard mixed reviews. Oh, that does not look good. All right, look at my special tool. If you don't have one of these, uh, go make one. They're awesome. So let me get in here. <clears throat> there we go. Open this at an angle, open it evenly, so I can not bust that clutch gasket, which I know I don't have. Gasket looks good. All right, yeah, so that looks to be the standard type. It does have this outer ring that spins, which that's the part that's actually directly up to the drive part. And then, once that spreads, connects this, which is the main crank to the whole engine, as you can see. That actually is under a little bit of load, too, you can tell. So it keeps it going when it's spinning. Outer ring, inner ring, expand, locks out. So, so there is your Centrifugal clutch expands, expands this outer ring, and then makes the whole dealio work. So the faster you go, it locks in place. So I guarantee if I do any power adders to this side, I'm going to have to take this off and adjust these a little bit so they set at a different time and a different RPM. Nice. All right. All righty, let's get into this last part here. Here, see, here's the starter mechanism, and it actually has the separate cords that go up to here. Then this transfers to this gear, which is connected to this pull start. Which, from everybody that I've heard mess with these, um, this is plastic. It's a plastic piece of crap on the inside. Uh, and it breaks. So, that's kind of why I think on that slim version they took it off, just because it's a known issue to break. So, um, let's go ahead and see what it looks like. I bet it's still plastic so we're short two on the edge all right let's see what this looks like yeah oh yeah you can see there's nothing but a big plastic gear in there Little spring mechanisms. This is at least metal that hooks on to this barb and spins the whole thing. But I guarantee this whole component will shatter pretty easily. But I mean, cool. That works. Oh, look at that little tiny gear, too. Little tiny chain and gear, everything. Uh, I see problems with that whole system, but we'll see. I do like the way all that. All those components and everything work. You see, this is already loose. So that's all one component here. I don't know if you can see this in here. So this is just one of those standard little electric starters for an ATV. I've seen it for snowmobiles, that kind of stuff with a tiny little get chain and gear there, which goes to actual the components of the engine. So I bet there's a similar connection gear into here that hooks to your actual drive gear. Yeah, this all looks like it would break pretty easily and we'll see in terms of durability how all that goes in. 
I almost guarantee I'll see you guys again when this shatters, all this shatters, and I have to replace it all and trying to figure out a replacement. So, until then, I'm gonna go ahead and button this guy back up. All right, well, I've had enough fun taking this apart. I do think from what I see and this little port job, I might be able to do a couple combination of things to get a little bit more oomph out of this engine. Um, we'll see, uh, gearing combination ratios, I don't know, I'm gonna get in and see what I can do with this to try to make it not a screamer, but you know, definitely something that'll get me to work on time. Alrighty, as always, thanks for watching. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. Comment down below, tell me what's going on. You're gonna see a lot more of this. And before I get out of here, I'm gonna show you a little bit of what's coming up next and some projects I'm working on. So, deuces. I don't know if you remember the old Minotaur trail bike that I made. Uh, that's the one that I blew up. Um, exploded. Shot metal right out the exhaust. So that one's going to be a fun mess to clean up and see what we can do with that one. But I got... All right. I keep building things and breaking them before I can even do a video on them. So I built this awesome little stretched out 29-incher beast of an engine on there. Custom front disc brakes. I already blew up the tank before I could even do anything. So you're going to see more of that. Um, I did get an awesome tandem bike from my good friend Steve Lenz. Um, check out his channel too. He does awesome custom fab work, including stuff like custom pipes. So if you need any baller pipes, let me know. And then, I don't know if you guys remember the Demon or the Hyper Cruiser that I built for my friend Adam last year. He wrecked it hardcore, completely blew up all the metal on the tank. So I bought it back, and um, I don't know what I'm doing with that. So... All right, and then finally, the only time I've ever said I wanted it to snow so I can go ride my bike, um, I need to test this thing out. Um, if you know what that is, check it out. That is the K-Track setup. So, all right, as you can see, I have a lot more coming, so don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe down below. And always, thanks for watching.